All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We thank you the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. Therefore, he can help us to understand it. And so we just ask the Holy Spirit to help us tonight as we study the Bible and cause it to get in our hearts and make us more like Jesus. For that's our prayer in his name. Amen. <clears throat> Ever since February, on Wednesday nights, uh, Andrew and I have been <clears throat> preaching on the Holy Spirit, the person, the power of the Holy Spirit. We've talked about the Holy Spirit and his role in worship. We've talked about the Holy Spirit and healing. Uh, we've talked about power encounters with the Holy Spirit. We've talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, particularly majoring on prophecy, because that's the one Paul majors on. I want you all to prophesy, he says. So that's, that's where he put the answer. But now, <clears throat> for the next three Wednesday nights, we're going to be talking about the fruit of the Spirit. So let's turn to Galatians chapter 5. My, my monitor's not working tonight, so, but I trust it's behind me. So I'll just read from, from, my, from my Bible. Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 22. Now, in, in verse 19, Paul talked about the works of the flesh, and he names them out. And then he comes in verse 22 to talk about the fruit of the Spirit, and he says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Uh, let me talk briefly about verse 24. But it's really off my subject, but I can't pass by verse 24 without talking about those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and its passions and and desires. Uh, when Paul talks about crucifying the flesh, he's not talking about what we might think. Uh, did you know it is a physical and a spiritual impossibility to crucify yourself? It's, it's physically impossible. You may get on the cross and nail one hand, but the other hand is still free to do bad things. You cannot crucify yourself physically or spiritually. When Paul is talking about crucifying the flesh, he's talking about what he wrote in Romans 6. 6-6, six, six, that, that where, where the scripture says that we were crucified with Christ. Everybody get a hold of that. We were crucified with Christ. 2,000 years ago, your old selfish, wicked, fleshly man died on the cross with Jesus. What God did, he took the whole Adamic failure lumped it into, into Jesus and crucified him as the last Adam. So our old man, the flesh, was crucified. Aorist tense in the Greek, passed once for all. We died with Christ. And then he says in Romans 6, 12, Therefore, reckon yourselves dead unto sin and alive unto God. That's, that's, that's why our part in crucifying. Reckon yourselves dead. Consider yourselves dead. It's an accounting word. Write it down. Put it down in the book that you died 2,000 years ago with Jesus. Now, reckon yourself alive under God. Praise God. So, our old man died. Consider it so. Act upon it. By faith, reckon yourselves dead unto sin and alive unto God. Well, that's just, that's kind of the, by faith. Side path. All right. Well, as we read Galatians 5, we saw that there were nine fruit of the Spirit. And when we studied in 1 Corinthians 12, we saw that there were nine manifestation gifts of the Holy Spirit. So nine gifts, nine fruit. Balance. Balance is a key word with God. Uh, let's look at an illustration of this. Go to uh, Exodus chapter 39. I'm not sure that the Holy Spirit intended this when he wrote it. This may be the gospel according to Jimmy, but it's very interesting. <laughs> Exodus 39, in which he is describing, in this passage that we're going to read, beginning in verse uh, 24, uh, the robe of the great high priest. And it says that on, on verse 24, on the skirts of the robe they made pomegranates 
of blue and purple and scarlet stuff and fine twisted linen. They also made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the skirts of the robe round about between the pomegranates. A bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate round about upon the skirts of the robe for ministering as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now notice the balance there. A bell and a fruit. A bell and a fruit. Now, I just think that those bells could be a, a real picture of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts tend to be more uh, noisy. The gifts tend to be, tend to be more uh, exuberant. But the fruit is quieter, gentler. And so the bells are cushioned by the fruit between them. So that when the high priest walked, the bells would ring, but not out loud, landish, because they were cushioned by the fruit. So there needs to be a balance of gifts and fruit in our lives. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, <clears throat> we saw Paul talking about the nine manifestation gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then in chapter 13, what did he do? He went right to the fruit and talked about love. And if you don't have love, you can have all those gifts and you're just noisy. And then in chapter 14, he comes back to the gifts and how those gifts are to operate within the church. So you have gifts in 12, you have gifts in 14, and in between them, you have fruit. Cushioning, balancing between the gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You know, if all, of you, if all you have is the gifts of the Spirit, without any fruit, you're just a noisemaker. That's what Paul says. You're a clanging cymbal, right? You're a noisemaker. But if you have all fruit... Without the gifts, what you, what you have is character and integrity without power. So we need both. We need the gifts of the Spirit, and we need the fruit of the Spirit in our life. And so I'm going to talk about love, joy, and peace tonight. We're going, we're going to do these in trilogies. Andrew will talk about the next three next Wednesday night. So love, joy, and peace. And as we talk about this fruit, remember this. The fruit of the Spirit is really the life of Jesus being released through us by the Holy Spirit. The life of Jesus being released through us by the Holy Spirit. Let's talk about love for just a moment. <clears throat> well, the Scripture says in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, Make love your aim. That's where we want to aim toward. Make love your aim. And then in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, uh, Faith. Hope and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. And the Bible also says love never fails. And in 1 Corinthians 3, I mean 1 Colossians 3, Paul is giving a list of Christian virtues that we are to put on. Put on this, put on this. And then he comes to verse 14, he says, Above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. So, Love is the key virtue. It is the key fruit of the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to talk a lot about love. What, what can I do in five minutes? It would take forever to describe the love of God that's in us and the love of God that can flow through us by the Holy Spirit. But let me just say this about love. It is not an emotion. That's where many people mess up. They think that love is an emotion. They fall in love. And yet, then when the emotion is gone, what happens? They fall out of love. Love is not an emotion. Love is a decision that we make. Maybe there's someone that we don't particularly like. I don't like everybody. But I know that I should love them. So I have to make a decision, a conscious decision to love them. And then, with the decision, I begin to put action. I begin to do acts of love. I begin to act loving toward them. And I may not feel one thing yet. I made the decision and I'm acting like I love them. I may not feel one thing, but I promise you if you'll make a quality decision to love someone and then begin to show loving kindness toward them, here's what will happen. The emotions will catch up. The emotions will begin to catch up and that wonderful fruit of the Spirit of love will begin to flow from your life toward that person. But often you have to make the decision first and then act upon it before the emotions catch up. Uh, <clears throat> and let me 
and this, this is true about all three I'm going to speak about tonight. Sometimes we say, oh, I need more love. And uh, so, Lord, Lord, give me more love. He doesn't say, okay, here's a package of love, UPS, I'm sending to you. No, not at all. Not, 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 no, no. Listen, the love is in Jesus. And Jesus is in us. No one ever loved like Jesus did. And his love is in us, praise the Lord. And so that love can be released by the Holy Spirit. You don't get a package of love. You got the greatest lover in all the world in you. His name is Jesus. And so we don't have to strive to produce love like Andrew said Sunday. We just abide in the one who is love. Amen. Live in him. Love him. And the Holy Spirit will release that wonderful love of God through our lives. Praise the Lord. And then joy. Let's talk about joy just a moment. Joy is very important. Romans 14, 17. We all know the verse, I think, that the kingdom of God is not food and drink. It's not physical. It's not natural. It's not material. The kingdom of God is not food and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen? That's, that tells us that joy is very important. It's a big part of the kingdom. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Uh, let me talk a little bit about what joy is not. Joy is not a thrill. It is not a bodily sensation. Uh, if you want that, get on a roller coaster. And when you're coming down that long, steep thing, throw your hands up in the air, you will feel a thrill. All kinds of bodily sensations. Maybe to the extent of a Wetting your pants, you know. It's, uh... <laughs> so joy is not in the body. But, and also joy is not <clears throat> a soulish emotion. You see, happiness is an emotion. And the happiness, that word gives itself away. It's built on the root hap. Happiness has to do with what is happening to you. Your happenstance. So if your happenstance happens to be bad, you're not happy. If your happenstance happens to be good, you're happy. That's not joy. That's an emotion based on what is happening to you. Joy is in the spirit. Joy is something deep down that can bubble up. Your hap can be real bad. In the midst of that, though, joy begins to bubble up from deep down within the spirit. And that is the joy of the Lord. Praise God. It's the joy of Jesus. Yeah. Nehemiah 8.10 says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Who is the Lord? Jesus. So the joy of Jesus is our strength. That's why the devil's always after our joy. If he can block that joy, if he can take that joy from us, he gets our strength. And if he gets our strength, we become weak, weak and he can beat the tar out of us. So that's why he's always after our joy. Praise God. Would you agree with me, Jesus was a joyful person? I believe he was. He wasn't a sad sack. He wasn't a killjoy. Nor was he a happy-go-lucky fool. He just lived in the joy of the Lord. Look at Hebrews 1 and verse 9. Because you have loved righteousness and hated iniquity or lawlessness. Therefore God, thy God, that's the Father, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond thy comrades. The King James said beyond thy fellows. Uh, Meaning, beyond other people. Your Father has anointed you with, the, 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 with joy. The spirit of gladness above your fellows. If I understand that verse right, it means Jesus was more joyful than anybody. He was more joyful than any person that ever lived. And so you have the greatest lover in the world living on the inside of you. And you have the most joyful person in all the world living on the inside of you. And his name is Jesus. Amen. So the, 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 the fruit of the Spirit, which is joy, is the Holy Spirit releasing the joy of Jesus in our lives. Praise God. 
And then peace. Well, peace is also very important. The kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now again, now remember, you don't get a package of peace. Parcel post. Sometimes we say, oh, Lord, I need peace. Give me some peace. Give me some peace. That's not a good prayer. Peace is on the inside of you because the Prince of Peace lives in you. Amen? Amen. And the Holy Spirit will release His peace through you. The peace is all in Jesus. Look in John 14 and verse 27. And this is Jesus talking to the disciples. I think it was on that last night, wasn't it, Andrew? Before, before he went to the cross. Andrew was teaching on that, that last night, Sunday. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. <laughs> Where does it come? Where's that peace going to come from? My peace. My peace I give to you. <clears throat> not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. How can we let our hearts not be troubled or afraid? Because he has his peace, peace he's given to us. And we just have to receive that peace. Praise God. My peace I give unto you. And if you, want, if you want an illustration of a person walking in peace, just look at what happened to Jesus those last 24 hours. As he is <clears throat> betrayed, arrested, tried, mocked, beaten, and crucified. And he goes through the whole thing. Just as cool as it can be. You say, Jimmy, why do you use the word cool? Well, it's because it's a cool word. And it, uh, it just means peace. It just means peace. He was in perfect peace in the midst of all that turmoil. That's because he, has, he is the Prince of Peace. Praise God. Uh, let me go a little bit, talk a little bit more about peace. There are three aspects of peace taught in the New Testament. Number one, peace with God. Romans 5.1. Okay, I'll read it. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Why do we have peace with God? Because we've been made righteous by faith. Amen. If you're striving to, st to, to find standing with God, if you're striving to get in good with God, if you're trying and all that, you're not going to have any peace. We have peace with God because He made us righteous. He gave us standing. He justified us. So because of that, we have peace with God. No longer striving, no longer trying to do works to get in good with Him, but we are at peace because we're justified by faith. And then second, there is the peace of God. Now look at Philippians chapter 4, <clears throat> 6 and 7. This is the RSV. It said, have no anxiety about anything. I say it this way. Don't worry about anything. Now that's a big order, right? Don't worry about anything. Now Dennis and Paul, I want you to clue in here, clue in here and listen to me. The Holy Spirit's going to talk to you in this. Don't worry about anything. Then he tells us how not to. But in everything, by prayer and by making requests, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Where's my verse 7? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, hear me carefully here. You can be at peace with God and be full of worries and cares and frets unless you have the peace of God. But when we come to Him in prayer, make our request for thanksgiving, He says that this peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word keep there is a military word. Could, it's, but maybe better to he'll guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's a picture of a Roman soldier standing at the door. Saying, no one comes through here. No one comes through here. Dennis, that soldier of the peace of God. 
is standing at the door of y'all's hearts. And in one hand, he's got a sign that says, keep out. In another hand, he's got a sword. He is guarding your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Let the peace of God guard your hearts. Praise God. <clears throat> you know, we've all seen people go through things, to terrible things. And so we say, wow, how can they be so cool or full of peace? Well, there's only one answer to that. It's the peace of God. It bypasses all understanding. There's no human explanation for it. It's supernatural. And so people sometimes in terrible circumstances are just as peaceful as they can be because they have embraced the peace of God. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit releasing the peace of Jesus into our hearts, the peace of God. And then third, the Bible talks not only about peace with God, the peace of God, but also peace through God with one another and with others. Look at, look at uh, Ephesians 2, 14 through 17. For he is our peace. That's good. Who, who has made us both one, Jew and Gentile, now made one, Black and white, now made one. Rich and poor, now made one. Who has made us both one, has broken down the dividing wall of hostility. By abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. And might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, therefore bringing the hostility to an end. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off. That was the Gentiles. Most of us were that. And peace to those who were near. That's Israel. He came preaching peace, praise God. So we can have peace with one another because he made peace by the blood of his cross. We don't have to be at war with one another. We don't have to be backbiting and fighting one another. Jesus made peace by the blood of his cross. What was that? <laughs> Be peaceful, please. Well, praise the Lord. Well, it's called the fruit of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit releases the love of Jesus, the joy of Jesus, and the peace of Jesus into us. Therefore, it's the fruit of the Spirit. Praise God. Well, I hope that was helpful. <clears throat> Let's pray. Now just remember, don't be saying, oh Lord, I need more love. Or I need more joy. I need more peace. Don't, no, no, no. He's not going to send you a package. It's already in Jesus. Amen. We just need the Holy Spirit to release, the, release it into our lives. Father, thank you for the wonderful Word of God. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, and peace. We thank you that, Lord, we, we, we love that fruit. We thank you it balances so well with the gifts of the spirit of prophecy and all the gifts. There's just such a beautiful balance that's to be in our lives. And we give you thanks for it and praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right.